All right, so now in this section, as I mentioned, we're we'll talking about English colonization methods. So there's just three characterizations that I want you to take note of. Um, there's private adventurers, okay? Um, they had little direction from the English government. Um, they were small. Um, they ended up making little profits, and they were isolated, uh, uh, um, basically, in, they were um, people from, you know, England making the English world here in the United States in these little colonies. Well, in fact, that's what the United States is now, right? Is Europe is Europe brought to America in many ways? And uh, you know, I mentioned that. Um, as a side note, some people kind of get a little touchy about that when I talk about um, the United States being an extension of a European project. But, I mean, let's think about it. A democratic republic, um, and we're speaking um, a, a, an English form that uh, descends from uh, Anglo-Saxon um, of the British Isles. Um, the, the, sorry, folks, we are an extension of Europe. But we, you know, in a unique way. This, I don't think it demotes anything, but just to say that's just, to me, a pretty straightforward fact. Um, and so, okay, that's all I have to really mention on that. Now, okay, so we're going to get into some interesting myth-destroying, uh, uh, debunking of some modern cultural things. Um, anyhow, um, so we, we're talking about, th there, were, there were some struggles um, with colonization. Now we get to Jamestown, Virginia, 1607, early 17th century, sponsored by London Company, later called Virginia Company. Uh, only 104 survived the journey sailing into Chesapeake Bay. It was a poorly chosen site, but it was going to be rejuvenated by John Smith. Do you recall this name, John Smith? Um, because they were having a lot of struggles there, uh, um, apparently, you know, really desperate for food. Well, there's this picture here, and who's this? Because it's John Smith. Who's this girl supposed to be? Ah, uh, this is the depiction of Pocahontas. So let's talk about Pocahontas a little bit. So you watch Disney, and um, yeah, Disney. I love Disney. We all love Disney. What kid? What person doesn't grow up loving Disney? But like Hollywood, a train wrecks of history. Sometimes, you know, what's really frustrating to me as a historian is I think that actual history is just as interesting and we could put a cartoon to it. Um, and unfortunately, while most Americans can read, they don't like to read that much or they don't do a lot of studying on this stuff. So you watch Pocahontas and if you watch the Disney ver version, you really get a skewed version of almost anything that has to do with the actual history, just like Braveheart. And uh, I mentioned that before. I pick on certain popular films because so many people watch them feeling like they're getting accurate history and, and they're not. And, you know, all, so that's the only reason why I really want to bring up her that much, but I kind of want to point out certain things about this as well. So in the Disney cartoon, it's John Smith that, um, you know, she has those romance with. In fact, um, John Smith is later going to say that she saved his life um, as she was becoming kind of popular in uh, England. Um, but most likely when he first met her, she was very young and um, hopefully not having any romantic uh, relationships with because that would be um, very inappropriate. Um, and so she did have a relationship with him, but not a romantic one. And later on, uh, it was assumed that he died, or she thought he died, and she's going to get kidnapped and um, held as a hostage. Eventually, she is going to remain with the English, and she's going to marry John Wolfe, okay? And she is going to become Christian. And what's going to happen to Pocahontas is that she is going to be sent to England. I remember I was talking to you about natives being used on display as, as, as for uh, some sort of exoticism, exotified. Well, 
hear this savage, you know, heathen woman converts to Christianity and becomes civilized and marries this man. And uh, when she comes to uh, uh, the British Isles, um, she's going to be a celebrity in England um, as some sort of, uh, um, like I said, you know, she is exotified. And um, yet she's not going to live long there. We don't know why she died exactly, but at 22, she dies in England. Okay, that was nowhere near in the Pocahontas story either, right? And um, she was buried in the, uh, you know, at a cemetery of a church or somewhere around one, but it's not found. But there's a, there are memorial sites to her, such as this one, um, you know, in England. So, anyways, I just thought I would. Uh, help ruin your Disney experience, um, at least for a moment. Okay, so a cargo ship with more uh, uh, colonists was found only uh, 60 out of 500 still alive surviving. Okay, um, the ship was picked up and the survival sailed down the river for home and then stopped by a cargo ship with the colony's first governor, Lord de la War, uh, um, or Ware to reform and restructure the colony, as in Delaware, okay? Um, and so um, that's just one aspect here. Again, I'm just kind of briefly talking about some things uh, uh, from this history. Now, I had a video clip, but it was um, removed because it was from a PBS uh, skit that, um, talked about tobacco. When I put down here, tobacco doesn't always kill. So I was mentioning to you that these colonies were having a hard time surviving. And one of the things that the colonists were able to figure out that actually had a market that is going to, that was going to, and one could argue still now, became a major success story was uh, harvesting tobacco. So I mentioned on the top here, tobacco doesn't always kill. Because in the case of uh, Jamestown, um, and this is what was in the video, tobacco is actually what makes it thrive and survive. And so um, that's something interesting to think about. So if you're still smoking cigarettes, you know, just smile. And say, hey, America, be thankful. But maybe you should, yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so we're moving on. Now, um, Jamestown becomes the kings. So I was talking about this starts off, the way a lot of these colonization um, uh, efforts seem to go is you let the private sector, you know, the, you let the, the rich explorers, the daring explorers do all the dirty work, you might give them some money to do it. And then at some point, um, you know, the crown says, hey, you know what, I think that I will uh, expropriate this for um, uh, the kingdom after all. And so um, you did have uh, uh, Jamestown um, becoming a part of the British until 1776, right? And um, and so and and you know when they when they were doing this, of course, as we mentioned in, in our first section, um, you know, Native Americans, as in the indigenous people and the settlers, from this point on tell uh, one could even argue now has a mixed legacy it's ultimately about conquest and conflict but not always strictly as such and it goes kind of you know in ebbs and flows and um here there is a um uh, just something i, I was going to read here it says in memory of uh Chanko, I might be saying the name wrong, to be honest, um, an Indian youth converted to Christianity who resided in the household of Richard Pace across the river from Jamestown and who on the eve of the Indian massacre of March 22, 1662, warned Pace of the murderous plot, thus enabling Pace to cross the river in a canoe to alert and save the Jamestown settlement from impeding, uh, impending disaster. Um, and so... Um, you know, there was that idea again too, right, of converting people and um, where loyalties would lie and, you know, the complex set of scenarios that could happen between the natives and um, the settlers. So I wanted to say about that. Now, 
um, we go to Maryland. Um, founded by George Calvert, the first Lord Baltimore. I, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Um, converted to Catholicism. Uh, intended to be a retreat for Catholics and business adventures. Uh, uh, okay. Um, he died before uh, char uh, he died before charter uh, was fulfilled, um, but his son um, was able to fulfill, fulfill it in uh, 1632. First, the first village was named Saint Mary's for the Queen. Okay, Maryland or Maryland. And um, not really a problem of poverty uh, problems with natives. Uh, mixed with Protestants and religious toleration was attempted. But Protestants and Catholics fought continually. Okay, and there was uh, uh, tobacco and there were slaves. Now, again, so we're seeing this European tension as I was telling you about the conflict of Christianity, that it wasn't just Christianity versus heathens but Christianity is verse other version uh, verse other versions of Christianity and um, you know what I'd like you to get from these brief lectures in this section is to see how each of these early colonies and what are now states are being formed and shaped by different people with different sets of reasons and that they're going to eventually, uh, you know, we're kind of seeing the embryotic um, point of time and where we're going to emer emerge uh, um, with the states that we have now. Um, so I'm going to stop here and the next I'm going to cover the very important topic of, of uh, Bacon's Rebellion.